All right, so let's uh, look at uh, look at line slopes and intercepts. So this is basically a, a more of an application of your xy plane. So let's draw a nice and neat xy plane here. Okay, so I have my x coordinate, my y coordinate here. Okay, so now what you can do here is basically have lines in your xy coordinate, right? So let's say you have a line like this, okay? And I'm gonna call this line L. Like this. All right, so this line, any line in your coordinate plane has two important properties. One is the slope of the line, okay? So by slope, what you mean is that how steep the line is okay so so basically see two lines uh, let me draw another line here and you can see what I mean by steepness so let's say this is our line L2 now line L2 as you can see kind of a rises steeply so if you were to think about the slopes of mountains let's say so if L was slope of one mountain L2 was the another mountain L, you would just say the climb is steeper on that mountain. Oh, L2, the climb is steeper, whereas L, the climb is less steep, right? So this is basically the same concept applied for lines and coordinate planes, right? Uh, okay. So now, how can you mathematically calculate slope? So to calculate slope, you need to know coordinates of two points on the line, okay? So any two points, so let's say I have point 1 here, whose coordinates are x1, comma, and I have another point here whose coordinates are x2, comma, y2. Okay, so once I have these points, basically slope is equal to the distance of your y coordinates of the two points over the distance of the x coordinates. Okay, simple as that. Let's give you slope. Now, graphically, you can you can know a lot about slopes. Okay, so let's let me draw another coordinate system here. Okay. So any line that goes from left to right like this. So all lines that go in this form, they all have positive slopes. So lines that go left to right. Okay, so all these have positive slopes. So the slopes would be greater than zero. Okay, now for lines that go in opposite direction to that. So lines like these. These lines have negative slopes. Okay. They go from right to left. So on a lot of questions on, on the GRE, sometimes you can just look at the line on the graph and see whether it's going, you know, in which direction. So like the blue lines here going from left to right will be positive. Red lines going from right to left would be negative slopes okay so that's the slope property of lines the other important property that you need to know for GRE is intercepts so intercepts are points where your line crosses any of the axes so if you look at line L here here's one point here that we graph this so this point over here where your line crosses the x axis this point is known as the x intercept of your line okay and the point where your line crosses the y axis this is known as the y intercept okay
Now you can see that one of the coordinates in your intercept is always known, right? So when the for the y-intercept, you would since the y-intercept is on the y-axis, the x value would always be zero, right? So if I would write the coordinate of my y-intercept, the x would always come out to be zero, the y would be whatever the value of the point here is. Okay. And similarly for the x-intercept, the x would be some value, whatever the value here is of the coordinate, and the y value would always be zero since your x-intercept always lies in the x-axis. Okay. Now there are two ways to find your intercepts. First is graphically. So if you have a graph, or if you don't have a graph, if you can just you have a, well, you have a line on the graph, you know you can just um, graphically say, okay, my x-intercept is two here, my y-intercept is three here, right? But not always you have graphs. So the other way is to find algebraically. But before we do that. Let's look at another concept. Okay, so the other concept that I want to go over first is equation of one. So if you have your coordinates and you have your line, this line can be represented in algebraic terms like this y equals mx plus b okay now you can ask you know what are all these letters here so two letters are simpler m is your slope b is the value of your x-intercept oops sorry y-intercept b is the value of your y-intercept X and Y are any points on the line. So, so generally, when you will see an equation of line, it would be like Y equals 3X plus 2. X and Y just stay in there. Uh, M and B have values, right? So M in this case is 3, B is 2, okay? So your equation of line can be by Y equals MX plus B. Now, when you have your equation of line, let's say, uh, let's take this equation, y equals 3x plus 2. And now the question is, what are the intercepts? Sets, right? So I want to find the x and y intercept. So the process is simple. For x intercept, plug y equals 0 in the equation here and this makes sense because for my x-intercept the y value is always 0 right so i can plug in 0 for y and i can solve for x which would come out to be negative 2 thirds okay now similarly for the y-intercept i can plug in x equals 0 okay so I'll get y equals 2. Okay. So a simple process, if you have the equation of a line given, okay, you can plug in y equals 0, x equals 0 to find your intercepts. Okay. Slope is very easy from the, from the equation of line. So like over here, my slope, I know, m is just 3. It's just the coefficient of the x value. Right, let's do some problems to apply the concepts we have just learned. Okay, so here's one problem. Find the x-intercept of this line or whatever it is, right? Now, one piece of advice. This doesn't look like a line, you know, the, the x is squared. Up to now we have not seen an equation where x is squared, right? But that doesn't matter. When you are asked to find the x-intercept, what you have to simply do is you have to plug in y equals zero in your equation and solve for x. So simple as that, plug in y equals zero, 
solve. You get x squared equals 5. I take the square root. And remember, the square root gives me two values, positive and negative. So I have positive, negative square root of 5. So there are two values. Basically, this tells me that there are two x-intercepts. And this can happen. So to understand why this happened, why you have two x-intercepts, you need to um, know what this equation represents. So this equation represents a curve that's known as a parabola. Now, just to, I guess, remind you, this information is very much optional. You know, it's very uh, unlikely that you would need to recognize an equation of a parabola on on the GRE, but this is a good information. So a parabola looks something like this. Okay, let me draw the coordinates properly. Okay, so parabola looks something like this. This is a curve, you know, kind of opening, opening up somewhere. So, so you have, you can have up to two intercepts of a parabola, x intercepts of a parabola. So, like over here, you have two intercepts here, right? Uh, also, parabolas could be like this, where they are centered on the origin. So, like this. Okay, in that case, you will have only one x intercept. Also, parabolas would be upside down, like this, okay? Again, in that case, we have one x-intercept, which is actually the origin. You could also have parabolas that are like this, they're opening sideways. Okay? Again, all this information is optional, you don't really need to know. The only point I wanted to make is that, yes, you can have curves which have two x-intercepts, they could have two y-intercepts also. So when you see your x getting, giving you two values, you know, for the intercept, uh, you don't need to worry about it. Okay. All right, let's do another one. So here is an xy coordinate. You have a line. The equation of the line graph on the rectangular coordinate system above is given by. Okay, rectangular coordinate system. Another way to you know talk about it, another way to refer to your xy plane. So you have basically a line that's given by this equation y equals negative thirteen over twelve x plus eight. Okay, and now. Just to remind you, see the slope here is m equals negative 13 over 12, which is a negative number. And you can see the line is going from kind of right to left, right to left. Okay, just a good, quick check. Now the question is asking, okay, quantity A is zero. So you want to find the length here. So quantity B, which is B is the length here, right? So if you see, this is basically a right triangle Right, and you need to compare the uh, sides of the uh, the legs of the triangle. Okay, just to clear, let's clear this all up. So you just need to find a zero, a b, right? And you need you know the equation of the line. So if I can find what a is, right, and what b is, the values here on the axes, right? Then I basically I know you know what the legs are, right? What the lengths are. So to find a and b, what I can simply do is find the x and y intercept, for which I can plug in, for the y intercept I can plug in x equals zero, for the x intercept I can plug in y equals zero in the equation. So when I plug in x equals zero, this term basically goes away, I get y equals eight. Oops. Um, sorry, I don't know what happened. Okay, so when I plug in x equals 0, I end up with y equals 8. So this basically tells me my x my y intercept, which is right here, is 8, right? The, the ordered pair would be 0, 8, and the value here on the axis would be 8, right? So OA is just, or AO is just 8, right? Again, you can use a distance formula. You have 0, 8 here, and you want to find the distance from A to origin. Origin is 0, 0. You can use a distance formula that, you know, the whole square root thingy, uh, but no need because you just know this is 8, this is 0, the length is 8, right? This is a straight line. Um, okay, um, the other thing, b0, for that we plug in y equals 0, 
in the equation to get the x-intercept. So y equals 0, I'll get 0 equals negative 13 over 12x plus 8. Negative 8 equals negative 13 over 12x, uh, which gives me, so I can cancel out these two negatives. And I get x equals 8 times 12 over 13. So this would come out to be about, so actually, since I'm comparing this with the 8 here, I know 12 over 13 would be less than 1. So this whole thing would be less than 8. Okay, so base 0 is less than 8, which means A is the bigger quantity and the correct answer here. Cool. All right, let's do another one. This is slightly hard, but it's just a small trick that makes it easier. Again, you have an xy coordinate, you have these figures in there. The above circle circumference includes point zero, 0,3 and 3, 0, and the base of the inscribed isosceles triangle passes through the center of the circle. Okay, what is the area of the triangle? All right, so you need to find the area of the triangle. Now we know the area of the triangle is given by one half base times height, right? So let's say if I take this to be the base, B, then the height that I'm looking for is this one, H, right? So now if I see the base passes to the radius and the question tells me the base of the triangle passes to the center of the circle. So base is actually the diameter here. So if I know the radius or the diameter, I actually know the base, right? So let's see, this information, there are two points that are on the circumference of the circle. Let's plot these points. So 0, 3, the x coordinate is 0, y is 3. So this basically means 1, 2, 3, this point right here. 0, 3, and I think 3, 0 would also be right here, 3, 0, okay? So what this is basically telling you, if I draw a line from the center right over here, which is actually the radius, right? I'm going to center to the edge of the circle, and this edge is right on this point that's given to me, right? So this basically tells me that the radius is 3. You see that? I can, um, I think it's more clearer if you draw both of these lines, right? So both of these lines, the length is three because I know this part is three, this part is three, right? So the radius comes out to be three. Now since the radius is three, the base of the triangle, which is a diameter, becomes twice of the radius six, okay? So I know the base is six. Now coming back to the height, let me clear this up a bit just to make things a bit clearer. Okay, that won't help. Uh -huh. Let's see. Okay, so the, the other question is the height, right? So the height, uh, let's change the color here. Is as we drew is from the center is from the center right up here to the triangle's vertex, right? And if you see, this again is the radius of the circle. This red line, which is the height of the triangle, is also a radius, right? You're going from the center to the edge of the circle, it has to be the radius. And we know the radius is three. So now just following this, we get the area of the triangle is nine. Okay, so the trick in these questions is to draw all these different segments which are not naturally given to you, right? So like we drew this height of the triangle, you know, we drew, uh, well we didn't draw the, the radius was all, the, the base of, of it was already drawn, but we had to infer that the base is actually the diameter of the circle. Okay, so these little things come together to help you solve the problem.